It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to today's event on pandemic management and preparedness in Germany and the US. We're still struggling to overcome the current crisis and people are becoming more and more anxious for a return to normal. Over the course of the last year, we've seen similarities in our approaches and in the impact of the crisis, but also stark contrast at times. Today, we want to take a look forward. What will a new normal for Germany and the US look like? What does future pandemic preparedness need to look like in order to enable us to better deal with similar challenges? Today's event is evidence of great cooperation, not only across the Atlantic, but also across the US. As you know, it has been a year since the initial lockdowns around the world, including in Germany and in the US. And uh, pandemic management and public health responses have differed greatly from country to country, changing, it seems like, more frequently than the seasons. And the most important tool to put strategies into action, the trust of people, has been harmed considerably. Disappointment and a desperate desire for getting back to the world as it was before are the benchmark nowadays against which all actions are being measured. Although vaccines have been developed and manufactured in record time, neither Germany nor the US seem to have found the holy grail of pandemic management. But as history tells us, there is usually not one perfect way of doing things. Nevertheless, we can exchange ideas for approaches and hopefully learn from each other. This is the time of public health and this is the time where public health professionals need to do their work and their job. And obviously they can only do this if a whole society accepts this approach and if you both have a reliable governance in your particular country, a certain education level in your particular country, if you have trust in official institutions, and of course, if you have the resources to be able to protect yourself against infections. And apart from one huge game changer, which obviously are vaccines, we are rich in science and we are rich in terms of financial abilities, but perhaps we are poor when it comes to the local business, to the local understanding. We need to our calculation, roughly 80% of the population being immune against this virus as due to the existence of new virus variants, obviously both transmission as well as also the burden of disease has increased. And obviously without an Im immunity in our population, we won't be safe until this has been reached. We need the people to understand what they have to do to protect themselves. We can focus on basic truths and needs now. And for me, those are plentiful, but I'm, I'm landing now on a, on a few core truths. One is the credibility of experts, because I think the lesson that I learned in the past year is the importance of lifting up that expert credibility. Two is the power of innovation. And three, the resilience of our citizens, of our communities, and of the people around us. I think the truth is that governments, international organizations, businesses, and NGOs all bring very different know-how table when approaching challenges like vaccine development and allocation. And we will be well advised to bundle these strengths in order to make faster progress. And this is especially relevant when we think about support for countries with developing public health systems, because after all, as a global community, we are only as safe as our weakest members. The fact that we had messenger RNA technology ready to be deployed at this time and our ability to so rapidly decode the genetic issues related to this virus is what allowed us to move with an amazing degree of speed. And so continuing to invest in that technology is important. In the US now, we have used monoclonals in about 350,000 people. Now, if you look at the clinical trials, that would indicate that we have prevented already by that number 17,550 hospitalizations and well over 7,000 deaths just through the use of monoclonals. And we have a number of antivirals underway now that are specifically aimed at coronavirus. We can also do things like data sharing, right? And really try and understand through scientific exchange more information about variants or more information about how vaccines and therapeutics are responding to these variants. And the commitment I would like us all to be able to make is to really try and close those gaps and not just with regards to what is in the news today around vaccines, but around therapeutics, around uh, just uh, generally 
access uh, to care and information with regards to, to COVID, because we know that those disparities have been apparent since day one. There was an interesting article in the New York Times recently with the hypothesis that they said in the, in the first wave, it was the more liberal regimes that were more successful because they were focusing on solidarity. Now in the second wave, and especially when it comes to the rollout of vaccination programs, the author hypothesized that it was more autocratic systems, and he counted the US into that bracket, that were more successful because the European Union is obsessed with equality and justice and not with outcome. I don't know. But we must acknowledge that other jurisdictions, the United States now, Israel, the United Arab Emirates, the UK, are doing a better job than the European Union. And we must learn the lessons as to why. In my observation, the successful countries have appointed a corona czar, a single point of responsibility, and usually somebody with either military or industry experience who can manage supply chains effectively and manage such a complex logistics issue. In the European Union, we have overly complex decision-making processes and we must rapidly learn our lesson from that. This has been the prime time of public health and collaborative response to something that was unexpected or rather unwished uh, that came to us. And most importantly, we have to deal with the human side to the good and the bad in this pandemic. We have to rely or should rely on the credibility of experts, the power of innovation and the resilience of people. And of course, learn from each other and benefit from our international exchange, getting to one table in order to, to move into the future and look forward into hopefully a better future for everybody. 